Hi, everybody, and welcome to this new thing that we're trying to do for perfites, just perfites, not in Espanol, nothing else, because uh, you might be curious, why are these two guys that are not uh, Mark and James uh, presenting? But, uh, well, what we are going to be trying to be doing this time is to review some of the old episodes, to renew them, and to touch some new topics and give our friends uh, Mark and James a little break. So to help me on this, I want to welcome to the Perfites family to my very good friend, uh, my amigo, Hendrik Rex. Hendrik, how are you doing? Welcome to the Perfites family. Hey, it's just amazing. I'm so excited to be here. It's my first episode officially on the Perfites family, so, uh, and more to come soon. So. Uh, it's honor to do this show with you, uh, Mr. Performo. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I'm super happy to have you here as well, and to be able to re to review all these topics and to touch back uh, on things that might be a little bit outdated, but as well that um, are still relevant and need a refresher for our friends that uh, want to keep the downloads happening on their podcasting apps. So. Uh, without more announcements for now, we will get into that in a moment. Um, let's get into the topic. What are we going to talk today? It's uh, the almighty performance test plan. This uh, document that um, you heard uh, probably in the title. Uh, so we will be remembering and reviewing the purpose for this document. What is uh, that you have or should have in it? and uh, some key characteristics of uh, this um, document from the waterfall days, because um, it, it aligns the stakeholders to work together. So, and, and to know everything what is going to happen, it's more or less like a contract. But before we describe it at more detail, it has elements. Hendrik, um, probably you can help us um, fitting up what are the elements? What are the components of this uh, test plan? So we have first the application context, and we will see what it is uh, later on. Uh, the test objectives, obviously, um, the, the scope uh, to do or what we want to do, uh, the requirements for the for the test, uh, and uh, and then of course one of the big stuff is going to be the RAM memory. No, no, we're not stuck. The memory. No, no. What's, what, what's, what is RAM? Uh, can you, can you, can it's you the insights, responsibility what? assignment matrix. Who is who in the project? But we'll get into that. What other uh, Of course, of course, the descriptions of the various tests that we're going to achieve. Uh, so we're probably going to monitor, we're going to do some automation, manual, low test, soak tests. There's so many tests uh, out there. So uh, we have to describe them, of course. Uh, the SLA, because at the end, end at the end, and the end of the day, uh, we need to make sure that uh, we know what is a positive or a negative results out of our test. So we have to describe them. So what are the requirements, the service level objectives? And now today, I think we could probably rename that to SLI, SLO, service level indicators and service level objectives. So what do you think uh, on this? Yeah, all those new uh, crazy elements, which I do believe are uh, very good candidates for an episode on itself. Uh, but we will touch on them a little bit. It's new stuff, part of this refreshing that we're doing. But let's keep going through the uh, components of a test plan before we dive deeper on each one of them. We saw the map. So not the map of uh, where you live or... the. the or the map of your house. We, we don't care about this. We're talking about topology, of course. And last section, uh, very important, uh, make it obvious, the planning. So uh, we can almost compare this document like a sort of a statement of work uh, yeah. where it's it, where we basically describe to everyone what's going to be done and what, we, what are the expectations. Yeah, it's... Um... Pretty much like a contract, like when you are going to buy a car, get a credit or something uh, official. This is an official document that um, will, 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 will be signed, will set expectations, uh, tasks. And again, as I said, it's like an, a statement of work, a contract. 
it's super official and it's super important for you to have it because you of course won't get a bank credit without a contract or unless you are doing it with a mob or something like that that is a little bit <laughs> underground or dangerous which is dangerous you should know not embark into a um, traditional uh, waterfallish testing uh, project without this without this signed defined and everyone aware of it otherwise you would be like uh, mob testing well that's another thing not what I'm trying to say but um, but we will go into each one of the elements. Uh, Henrik, I think uh, f for now, let's do a quick pause. What do you think? Yes, let's do it. And then we're going to go on each de and details on each of those steps. Yeah, let's uh, do a quick commercial pause and we will be back with the elements. Today's ProFlights episode is brought to you by our exclusive sponsor, Flood.io. Whether you need to load test a single URL, simulate realistic user scenarios with JMeter, or execute extremely large concurrency and volumes with Gatling, Flood.io provides a simple and affordable platform for everyone. For more information, visit their website at flood.io. So let's start with it in each steps that we just described. And, and let's start with the first one. And we mentioned application context. What is the application context? Um, so in the application context to me and how I like to describe it, do you remember those uh, Jedi Knight films that at the beginning always gave you this sliding te text that would describe everything that was happening? This is very similar to this uh, document. It's the, the, the story, what is happening around the application, what it does, who's involved, uh, who created it. Whatever you think is relevant for the project, it needs to go here and tell everyone uh, as a newcomer, as a team member already, or I like to call it for my future self. If I have to go back and repeat this project in a year to six months, uh, sometimes I don't remember what I did uh, last week, neither uh, even less a project. So this is very important. You need to give the story, the context, and what is happening with the application, right? And yeah, and and, and I think uh, you mentioned it. You can you can have uh, one expert uh, starting the project just to size and to understand what would be needed to, to achieve for the to validate properly the performance, but uh, someone else will take over. So uh, don't underestimate that part of the document, which is really crucial because it gives at least everyone aligned that will be involved at least in this project to deliver properly the performance validation of your applications. Yeah, it's it's super important that you give this context and that people knows uh, how what is happening, what's the deal with the application, the project and the needs. But from those needs comes the next section, which is the test objectives. Uh, why the test is needed, why are we going to be doing this? And uh, to me, this is one of the most important questions in a performance testing project, the why, because that reason is going to define very much uh, what why? are you going to be doing. The question, uh, Shakespearean style, um, not not to be or not to be is why, right? But uh, what, well, you said why, but at the end of the day, we just validate in performance. What, so basically, I'm just going to say uh, objectives. Uh, I'm going to validate performance. That that's going to be it. Or well, and and this is a big misunderstanding in the industry. You have a very good point because everyone thinks that performance is just that thing, that checkbox that is in our test plan, and that we must do it. But um, a performance test is going to be very different depending on what we said in the studying of uh, the context of the story, because. Um, it's going to be, even if it's a movie, I mean, we can have different types of tests, um, theater, um, a uh, comedy or something like that. We have here a movie, but it will change depending of uh, what is the circumstances. Maybe we have a villain, maybe it's a romance, but everything falls inside of performance. And not every performance test is the same. It depends a lot on what are your needs. Uh, what could be those needs, Henrik? You you have faced many of those. I mean, uh, there is a lot of different type of application that are facing different type of risks related to performance. So 
I am, let's say, a call center. So there's a big change that every morning between 8 and 9, everyone comes in the office, log into the CRM systems. So basically, you have a spike situation with, I don't know, thousands or 100,000 users connecting in the morning. So that's, for example, is a requirement. Let me check that this uh, that all the users are able to connect properly in the morning. So that will be a situation, for example, a test objective that we need to achieve. Other example, uh, let's say I need to test a, a trading app. So I know that the traders are located on different stock, stock markets, stock options, stock markets. So you have the Asian market, you have the uh, US market, you have the European market. So basically during the day, there are different moments uh, of the day where you will have different population working together. So Asian market working with the European market. And then later on, maybe European to alone. And then later on in the evening or just before uh, closing the European market, you will have the US market and the European market together. So that's three situation. Of course, I'm not going to do one test that simulate everything, but I want to simulate those uh, spike and then go down, spike and go down, because those are current situations that you will face once you get in production. And uh, you bring up a very good point, like you cannot cover everything with a single test. And this is a big misunderstanding also from um, testing leads, organizations, even like the CEO or many high level uh, members uh, in, in, a, in an organization that I have uh, seen will tell you, hey, just do your performance thing and just clear everything up. No, you cannot. Uh, there's no silver bullet. You need to focus on the risks and develop a type of test for that specific risk. There's not a single medicine that will cure you from everything. You have a headache, you take an aspirin or, um, I don't know, uh, what was the name, Advil or some of those others. Uh, you have a pain in your knee, you use hot water. So that's why I was saying the why will make very different what you will be doing, even if all of them are performance, if all of them are medicine. You're taking medicine by the mouth, you're being injected, others going through some other uncomfortable ways. Um, and all that will depend on what you are needing. All that is medicine, all that is performance, but um, what a, di differs on what you need to achieve. And in fact, just to describe what you need or to explain to your customer what you need, I used... It's a perfect section, I mean, at least from my perspective, I used to do that, to add your pre-analysis -analy of the traffic that has happened in production. So if you have access to Google Analytics or to any APM product that your uh, project or your customer are using, then you can do a first piece of analysis saying, okay, this is what I see in terms of traffic. This is the number of, of transactions I can I, we observed in in a normal a daily a number of hours or peak hours, whatever. Um, so, do explaining what you have, have observed that will probably be translated into test objectives at the end of the day. So, but feel free uh, to in, add your analysis there. In in that sense, I believe that you're getting ahead because that information also is crucial and critical to build a very good test plan. But right now we're just saying the needs, right? What uh, do we need to test? What are the risks? And um, what uh, are we trying to achieve through the test? And of course, that um, uh, is a requirement or, and very important to see when is more activity. You don't want to test how a system is doing at midnight if your concern is if it will handle it. If your concern is like, hey, how much gasoline uh, is my system consuming at midnight because I have a local power plant and it drains more gasoline if it's too bad in performance, you may want to know what is happening at midnight in terms of performance. So it will depend a lot. But those, part of those pieces uh, will be relevant as well on what you are going to do. And this is like a cheap segue <laughs> to the next uh, component of a test plan where um, we are going to give a scope. Important, it's really, really important to define a scope. What, how far will we going? What are we going to be doing? And um, many, many other details to not to generate false expectations. Um, what things do you like to define, Henrik, in, the, um, in your scopes? 
for example, if you know that there are batches, uh, just simply say, I want to uh, validate the batches. Uh, I will probably uh, uh, run batches while we have traffic to figure out if the batches impact my users. But if you're not, are not going to touch any batches because it's not your role, you should clearly precise that you won't be not touching any batches and you will be mainly focused on the user interactions or traffic uh, that comes in in your application. Yeah. And from from my perspective as well, I remember uh, when some other teams and customers were thinking that we were going to fix the performance of the application. And that's a, a complex limitation on the scope that you need to give. Uh, I will test it. I will tell you where it is failing, but most probably I won't fix it. I'm, I'm uh, probably an X-ray expert, but I'm not the physician that will make sure that you get back in shape. I will tell you where it is broken. And many of those things, like I won't script this, as Hendrik said, I won't script for a batch. A batch is triggered automatically. Why do you need an automation for that? Uh, but what I will do is a script for these. I will do uh, install a monitor, all of those things that you will do, the ones that you want to do, and make sure that everybody understands. Because, um, I, and, I, and I will say this an, an, as an extreme example, but on some organizations, uh, it's like they expect me almost even to clean the bathroom uh, during the project. And we're like, uh, don't you have someone for that? And might be a bad analogy, but it's like a database tuning or clean up logs or release disk spaces. Data, don't let me get into data. That's another one where we have big limitations. You have had experiences, right, Henrik? Cleaning logs in cleaning bathroom. Is it the same thing? Yeah, it might be. Yeah, you're cleaning a lot of uh, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and, and not also that. Uh, generating, like um, with the data example, it's like I'm bringing my cleaning supplies, I'm bringing my data, or are you going to give me cleaning supplies to do this uh, type of work that you're requiring me? Uh, and then that gives, a, that gives a perfect uh, word to go to the next section of the test plan. You mentioned requirements, mm -hmm. and that is a section of the test plan, requirements. What we need to start our work. Uh, what are the... And the, you cannot imagine how many requirements we need to achieve properly our tests and the performance validations, right? So and I would say not only to start the work, but to do the work, to finish it. All those things will be needed along the way, right? So yeah, if two examples. For example, if I cannot use my own laptop, uh, I need to use a corporate laptop. So for example, you need to precisely describe which type of laptop you need in terms of CPU, hardware, disk, whatever it is. Um, if it needs to be in a specific network location, for example, example as well. Then uh, credentials. Uh, credentials. You need so much credentials when you talk about performance testing. Credentials to reach out to uh, your application. That could, that could be more like a test data, I would say. But otherwise, credentials to reach out to various systems to collect logs or events or, or metrics or anything like this. Yeah, uh, and, of uh, course. I, I would like to add a, a few more. Um, sometimes, and it's super seen on these moments, and I'm saying it from personal experience, physical access, like to the office, to a data center. Uh, sometimes you need um, very specific things and... I've been in a few that you have to be decontaminated to be able to be inside of where the microprocessors are being done. Uh, some of those things are overstated and should be placed here. Like um, you, we, I'm to work, I'm going to need access. I'm going to need my fingerprint to be registered in your system, uh, to have um, access to the database, to monitoring logs. All that is important for our work and should be uh, stated here. And uh, as I said, even data, if it has to be provided to us, it has to go in this section to say, hey, I need these many records for these many executions. Or just say, I need support for these records. I need to be given care, supported, uh, some hugs. Well, now that we can get hugs again, probably we'll keep getting those in the requirements. <laughs> but one thing you mentioned, you meant data. Uh, don't 
uh, don't forget to mention volumes. It's not functional testing we're referring to. It's load testing. Dataset is a very complicated topic. We cannot address it today, but we could probably do a dedicated episode about it. Uh, but I just want to add as well that monitoring is super important. So maybe you want to have traces. You, you are spending the time for the project that is crucial. So make sure that you have everything to be able to properly understand the problem and why it's slow and even the line of code that codes that that's, uh, outage, for example. So don't run your test without monitoring. I've seen We have seen so much project where people say, I'm not going to put the monitoring because it's too complex to set up. All right, maybe, but remind yourself that running low tests without monitoring is exactly like listening to a horror movie at the radio. You will hear, of course, the actors scream because you're putting a lot of pressure on them, but you don't have the color. You don't have the... You don't know who is screaming. You don't know what's the problem. So today, in 2021, we all have HD 4K screens. So put the full HD screen in the front of your load test or your performance test. So then you can have the right input to understand what's going on. And following up uh, from where you stepped ahead earlier, as you say, monitoring logs, utilization patterns. Uh, this is also very important and especially for us in uh, performance to design good scenarios. We uh, generally put those requirements. Uh, tell me how hard is your application being hit? How many times the processes? All that information should be provided and available. But here you have to say, I need this, 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 that, that as well. Those other things, the hogs, very important. And um, what can happen if I don't get uh, those things? It's really, really important. Um, but moving on, uh, another element that uh, your uh, test plan should have is the famous RAM that Hendrik was mentioning. Again, not the memory, uh, but this one refers to people, us individuals, uh, not resources like others like to put people involved. Resources are computers and machines and drives and all that. Here, people, stakeholders. We need to define every person what is a stakeholder, everyone involved in a project uh, relevant to what you have to work on. Um, which which people do you usually uh, put, Henrik? Uh, you, for, of course, you will probably have the project leader um, that needs also to sort of sign the, 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 the test plan or various steps of the things. He needs to validate. He needs to also approve uh, your analysis that you have, uh, the, the, the observation that you have made on the traffic that you've seen in production or the test, the, the, the use, user flows that make sense to be a part of the, your test. Uh, DBA, maybe uh, at certain stage, we, you don't have the expertise on, on, on analyzing what's going on in the database. Maybe you need a DBA. So maybe you need to also uh, mention to that person that he will need to be there at the project at one certain stage of the project. One, one thing... From what you're saying is, in general, who uh, is in the project and the responsibilities, right? What you are going to need from them. Um, and I would say here, key people uh, for the project. And some things not only needs in terms of data accesses or who is important, but as well, who takes the decisions, who, well, will fund you, who is responsible for you being working there, uh, who will oh. sign, and that's another one. Or, or even just one thing, simple thing. Who needs to be informed? So remember, maybe I'm starting the project or Leandro is starting the project and then later on someone else is going to take over. So it will be very crucial that that person who will take over knows who will need to be involved in those meetings. So just maybe the one that needs to be informed. Simple like this. Yeah. Here as well, all, all the people that uh, will get uh, announced the information, when do they need to be available, for what, what do we need them for? What do they need to talk each other about? Some of those things, not as detailed, but uh, at least put names, role, and what is uh, what you are going to be needing from them during the project. Or if it's someone that, hey, I'm going to notify you that we're done, but you are designer. So you are who has to be ultimately happy with what we did. All that is super important. And uh, speaking of super important, um, let's 
take another pause. Let's uh, give a chance for more of our announcements and commercials and whatever these important things we have to put in between. And uh, then we'll be back in a moment. Right, Henrik? Yes, let's take a coffee. Okay, we'll be back. Hola amigos, it is me, Leandro, aka Señor Performo, together with Perf Bites Press, announcing that by the end of June, we will start the pre-sale of my baby, finally reaching the Amazon bookstore, the hitchhiking guide to load testing projects. A fun step-by-step -step guide, or level-by-level, -level, may I say, that will guide you through your load testing adventures. More details to come soon. Beware! All right, so just after this pause, let's uh, resume the description of the various uh, steps that you have to add in your test plan. And now after the RAM, not the memory, we need to go to the descriptions of the tests. What exactly we will be doing to validate the performance of our application. Uh, of course, this... The, the, the type of test, the test that we're going to will vary depending on the project. Uh, and it's pretty much related to one of the section of documents. What do you think, uh, uh, Alejandro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, depending on, remember I mentioned the why, uh, why we need to do a performance test. Here is where we are going to define what exactly will be done, where it's going to be very, very different um, if what is needed is a load test, a spike test, a capacity test, all of these where we do automations and we do all of these um, fun processes, we need to list each one of them. If we are going to do the scenario for load, the scenario for the spike test, the scenario for this, we need to describe them here exactly. And I mean, exactly like how many virtual users, which test cases, which scripts, how are they going to be ramping up, ramping down? All those little details about a scenario should be described here as possible uh, written in a written format because um, there are um, some elements from a scenario that, well, you won't put passwords, user keys, or tech jargon very much in the scenario. What other things do we have to put here? I mean, simply, if you, you mentioned there are so many different tests, and depending on the test, on, on why, we, what are the objectives, there are maybe uh, some tests where you're going to focus on the combination of two user flows. For example, a user coming in, uh, connecting, and the other one just, uh, I don't know, just uh, doing some browsing on the pages. So that's two user flows. But then maybe on another test objectives or another type of test, you will have different user flows. So just describing those user flows how many transactions per seconds or how many hit per seconds, whatever ever things that will describe the load that you apply on your systems will be very important because at the end of the day, once you're going to configure those this tests that you've described there in your preferred tool, then you will follow like a IKEA, uh, 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 like a IKEA. Uh, um, the furniture. Yeah, the, not the furniture, but uh, if I need to, to, to mount a... a uh, step one, assemble I'm going to take my screw. And <laughs> I, I need to assemble. So basically, this is like the, the, the screwdriver, it's the same thing. You need to figure out uh, the settings that you have to configure in your prefer, preferred choice tool. All the instructions, even like uh, turn right to put the screw in. There are some that are backwards and you need to turn them by, uh, left, uh, counter clockwise and all those things. But uh, And as well here, not only those instructions as well, we will describe the elements if we need to instrument code, if we need to implement some special readings, uh, if we need to put um, some alerts. Because remember, not every performance project is a load test project. We can be trying only to monitor a system that we have no idea of the performance and the project could be, we just need to put an APM and get readings out of it. Here we will describe that we put this APM, we configure these dashboards, we configure these metrics, and we configure these alerts. Uh, some others could be just uh, organic, put some synthetics, which is a, a script. We can just be wanting to do a baseline or just monitor and measure how it is doing when no one is in the system. Some systems are super expensive just by being turned on. So there are all these combinations, again, be very careful, 
not all of the test plans are for low tests and capacity or automations. We may not even have an automation and we just want to measure the performance of um, real flesh and bone people clicking on the system saying, I'm not a robot. Uh, and, and this is part of those configurations and the description of what exactly we will be doing to get the performance metrics that we want to test. This is a test plan. Um, so I think moving on, what's the next section, Henrik? Uh, service level agreements. Basically mm -hmm. the objective. Mm -hmm. What will define if it's a past or if it's a fail? And of course, uh, don't only limit to technical objectives. Because SLA was mainly coming from the functional world. I think in the performance world, we can more go on the direction of SLI. So oh, we said it, it's going to be maybe an episode for that to explain in details on the, the approach. But again, keep in mind that basically it's, it's, it's going to be defining what makes your test pass and what makes your test fail. And also, don't limit yourself on technical only requirements. Maybe you say, hey, I don't want to, I don't know, let's say, uh, consume more than 80% of memory on my service. Okay, that's a technical requirement, and we know that. But maybe there are other requirements more related to the business. Remember, performance impact uh, your users, and the users, if they are unhappy, uh, they will probably not buy products if it's an e-commerce platform. So there is a direct impact to the business, so it makes sense also to describe the business objectives as well that you could probably also measure because maybe at the end of the day, we do performance because we want to make sure that our system is stable, robust, and ready to take the load from our real users. Yeah, and uh, some of those, as you were very well mentioned, we will get into the SLAs, SLOs, SLIs, and all the SLs. But this, this is mostly what will count as a good performance or as a bad performance. And it's important here, because as Henrik mentions, it can be business-oriented, it can be subjective. So many times uh, when we are being told, yeah, that all my transactions do not take more than three seconds to respond. Well, you have a transaction that is a monthly, month end cut um, accounting processes that cannot complete in three seconds. There are many things that if you put everything on the same umbrella, it will be complicated. So. Beware here, there are also, as uh, you very well say, Henrik, I like uh, some organizations, and especially today with the cloud, that you can calculate how much is bad performance costing you. I've seen uh, some of these metrics where um, if the CPU is too crazy, if you have to spin up too many machines, well, the money spike will go like crazy, and you can have that um, acceptance uh, saying, hey, that's expensive. We cannot let this go that high. And all these combinations will be set into saying the performance was good or the performance was bad. Was bad. And it's not, again, a silver bullet, not one size fits all. Um, I'm sure you also have had many experiences there. Yeah. And then there's other, sometimes company says, we're going to define the uh, objectives for performance globally for every application. I uh, I don't mm. know if they are always a standard SLA for everything. I think you should probably think twice before you say that. But uh, that's my opinion. Yeah. Well, and moving on, you defined what is a good or bad performance here, what is going to be taken as. Now we need a map. We need to know where things are, where things can get stuck, uh, which is called a topology map a key element for a performance test plan that often many people just misunderstand or uh, just like map, what? No, I, I told you it's this server and this server and that's all you have to know. Well, no, uh, we need to have clear uh, indications of where are each one of the things. And one thing that, um, go on. Uh, and, and I will say the map is good, but if you know that you have environments that are clearly different between your production environment, your performance environment, your dev environment, it could make sense also to describe pr those environments, what are the dif differences between the environments. So then 
you could try to uh, extrapolate. Uh, extrapolation is not a great world, but sometimes if you know that your production <laughs> is four times bigger than your performance environment, uh, you should consider that when you analyze your results, of course. That That's a very good uh, topic. We should take notes for another episode, that, those extrapolations that used to be believed that were possible. But uh, you're totally right. Uh, you need to have a map for each one of the relevant environments. Let's say if we are not going to run any tests on the dev environment, well, we might not include it. But what about uh, if someone asks, like, hey, why does my performance suck in the test environment? If you tell me that uh, in pre-prod it was awesome. Well, according to my map, your test environment is this big and uh, your prod environment or pre-prod is this big. It's way, way larger. So understandable. And another functionality for this is to be able to pinpoint bottlenecks. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to give you a big warning. Don't ever accept just a direct network uh, diagram for your application because that's for networking, for cables, for where the IP connects to blah, 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 and where it's the router, the tables, the map. We need something that shows us uh, an abstract representation of the data. data. Where is it flowing so that uh, we can find uh, all these issues exactly where they are? Have you ever been running around without knowing where it gets stuck, Henrik? <laughs> no, no. I, I, I try to avoid as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you have to take advantage of this section, even if it's painful, because someone will say, I don't have any map. So, all right. So take the, uh, the advantage of that situation to organize a meeting with the architect or, or any people that knows probably your apps. And then from there you would be able to learn. And that will be super useful later on when you're going to try to analyze what's going on. Because mm -hmm. if you don't even know how the traffic goes down in the application, which components are involved and so on, then it's very hard to figure out where you should pay attention when you run your tests. And, and, and an element that I think it's crucial there, um, when... And this happens so many times when the team or the solution, the organization do not have a map for the application. We as performance engineers, we can hold our hand and like, hey, come on, I will help you. We will work it together and we can create one um, as long as we get good information and they tell us where things are passing through. Uh, and it's this is useful for monitoring as well to know where do we need to put our agents, those probes uh, behind the server so that uh, we get readings from the crucial and important components. Without them, we will just, I don't know what to monitor, it's a black box, I have no idea. That's not good. And some APMs uh, help you on this as well. Uh, if you install them in the relevant components, you'll get a glorious map right away automatically with uh, many of these tools. But um, again, if you don't know what components are involved, where do you put those agents? Where do you install things? So that's that's why it is uh, crucial to also have a map, to not to be like uh, Lois and Clark discovering everything as you go. You should better know where are you passing through, right? And, and then also with the map, it's, it's, it's the right opportunity to figure out, oh, this is basically load balancing on this action. Uh, there is a cluster policy here. Uh, all right, so maybe you can come back to uh, the, the description of your object, why you, what are your objectives, and you can come back to the description of a test and maybe say, it makes sense to add chaos engineering here. Maybe I'm going to do some, uh, uh, generate some outage, uh, check, getting down one server to figure out what's going on. Because, you know, at the end, sometimes it happens in production more than you think. <laughs> so it makes sense to also take a few hours to just validate that it's working as expected. No, and you will notice those differences like, hey, production has this and prepare doesn't, probably they, we will find an issue here. Or if you find an issue, you will be able to pinpoint it like, hey, here in the bathroom stall is where the line stays and that's where everyone uh, keeps waiting. That's why they cannot go to the next uh, attraction in our amusement park following the map reference. So be sure that you include it uh, as accurate and representative. No networking in the diagrams. Those are for other purposes. But maybe uh, even, I, I agree, networking diagram usually then you could 
either be lost depending on the complexity of the environment, mm -hmm. of course. But sometimes it makes sense as well. Also, if you have to generate the load outside the network or in the network, to also show where where those. If you I'm referring to load testing here, but if you're if you need to generate load from specific geo geography, let's say uh, I have user base in Japan or, or London or whatever, so it makes sense also to to put your load array somewhere. And, and also maybe check it out with someone that is the uh, network engineer of the application to figure out that what will be the route for those users. So those information will be very useful later on your project because when you see that, for example, a given a specific population sitting in a specific geos is slowing down or having bad performance, maybe because you have this information, you know, oh, those users are routed to this link, network link, then you start to think, okay, so maybe that's a saturation on the link. So it's also important to know. So knowing is also helping you later on. Boy, I think uh, we also will have to do an episode on topology maps because they are they are super important and a huge topic on themselves. But let's keep moving. We need to focus, plan, plan, plan. <laughs> um, well, and speaking of plan, 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 the test plan, uh, the next section is the actual plan, the actual uh, flow of events, because we need to describe to our customer, client, our project, exactly what we are going to be doing, more or less, what dates, what are our dependencies, uh, all, all that uh, Gantt flow chart where we say, before I can do this, I need to complete this, I need this, this, this to start this next step, calendar dates. Um, what, what other things would you put there, Henrik? Uh, the the uh, the important steps uh, or, or phase of your project. What's, you what's the name for, for example, these milestones? Milestones. Milestones. Yeah. If, for example, before you do a, you start executing your test, or before you do, you need a let's say a, a global validation for some few stakeholders. It makes sense to put it. So if people are not available at time, then of course uh, you I'm not able to start my my engagement. So yeah, maybe. Putting that somewhere makes sense because the, if at the end of the day the customer says, "Hey, why did you run your test?" Hey, because nobody improved what I described in my test plan, and I need the approval. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that also will uh, have to do with dates. When is the system available for testing? Because uh, we need to communicate that, "Hey, everybody, on this day, I need everyone to step off the system because I'm gonna slam it," or no one pay attention to me. I'm just measuring uh, as you are working. That's useful for me. Um, how long do I need for scripting? How long do I need to reboot the system and install my agents or uh, instrumentation, any new version? So all these things, we need to put it in the actual plan, which will be generating. Uh, and, and we will say as well, what results, what metrics are we expecting to gather during these uh, steps? One thing, I think is the output. Uh, let's say we need a uh, test plan uh, to be ready to start scripting for um, test cases. To be able to run the scenario, I need the scripts ready and all that flow. Remember the Gantt chart again um, and gather what results. But speaking of results, um, I think the last element is the output, those results that what are we going to be doing with them? Um, the, the, the expected report, final report outputs, how would you call it? Uh, the, uh, the, the fireworks performance report. <laughs> the CSI report, what happened <laughs> and how was the victim killed and what happened, uh, probably killed this, um, too strong of an example, but you get what I'm trying to say. What are we going to be delivering at the end? Uh, and could be as well the deliverables, all the output, like I'm going to give you the scripts, the raw data, I'm going to give you the monitors well done, the dashboards, instructions to create the dashboards, all these things, again, so that we have good expectations of what all this project is going to be uh, speeding. And um, any any other important thing that you think we should include in the as output or report? I'm trying to uh, get more examples. I think there are also maybe there are. Uh, keep in mind that uh, you have different type of stakeholders. Um, so maybe there are reports that are designed for technical stakeholders, 
And there are reports that are more for business owners, which is less technical, but just give you the overview. So maybe also precise what type of level of details you will have in those reports, depending on who is going to read the report as well. It could be very useful as well. And I'm going to go back again to, hey, this is another episode. Because reports, there are flavors, there are ways, and depending on the output. And as Hendrik very well said, um, who is reading it? Making sure that it's adequate to them and that they will understand it. And speaking of understand it, let me jump to the next one. Uh, and this is a bonus. Not everyone likes to put it, which is a glossary, uh, a term, uh, glossary of terms. Because uh, for us, performance tester, a throughput variance can be very evident and understandable. But if you explain it to a, I don't know, CFO, he will be like, yeah, that thing, sure. I don't know if I want to let you work in that. And it's important that and everyone understand, right? And then sometimes there are terminology that we use because we used to name things based on features that of certain products. But sometimes this terminology will have a different meaning for another user. So it makes sense to just take a few minutes to say, when I talk about throughput, I mean uh, the number of bytes that I'm downloading, for example, and I'm not talking about hit per seconds. So just uh, keep it clear. I mean, at least it's avoid misunderstanding from your stakeholders. Yeah, and uh, as well in this part, uh, and it's a very good point, many people call the same things with different words. We want to make sure that in the end, um, oh, it's a test case or some others are user steps or depending on how you call some of the things, you need to have an official agreement there in the document because not everyone calls a spade a spade and that drives me nuts a little bit. But in testing, we have some terms that not are, are not universal. We don't have a global organization to make sure that they are all in line. Uh, so it's very good so that everyone understands. And well, and, and here you can drop as well some appendices, attachments, extra information that you would like to have for um, whatever extra reason, all those fun comments at the end. And I think that's it, right? I think, yeah, I think uh, we have all the details for uh, the performance assessment, I think. Basically, I would say that never start a project that involves performance without it. Uh, it's like constructing a building without blueprints, studies, permits. Uh, it's the basis. Uh, so even if you spend time and, it's, it's, uh, and your customer is not happy about it, it will save your life for sure. So don't underestimate that steps. Yeah, and, and also I'm going to close with that. It's uh, very important that you have it. Many, many organizations, what they want for you is like, hey, performance assessor, when do you start scripting? Um, when we generate the plan first, when you give me all this information, when we, you, ju you don't just jump digging holes and trying to construct buildings, as Hendrik say, without all the studies, without getting permits, without getting blueprints uh, specifically designed for what you are going to build. So be beware, uh, generate this. Uh, like I said, it's like a contract. Don't go on and do a loan <laughs> without an official contract because otherwise you might be just uh, dealing with a mob. And I don't want you dealing with mob, uh, the performance mob and doing shady uh, performance businesses. Let's, let's do everything official formal and as well planned as possible. So I think um, we got it. That's it, Hendrik, for today. Yep. I think uh, we could maybe have uh, another episode uh, just uh, uh, just to, to, as a suggestion. Uh, let us know, by the way, if you, if you think it's, it makes sense to try to get the angle of the agile world as well, because here uh, it's, it's waterfall we mentioned. Even if your project is an agile, sometimes performance happens very late in the cycle. So it's like fragile or water, whatever, whatever. Why we water fragile. <laughs> yeah. So it means that your performance is still in a waterfall, even if your project is in agile. So it will still make sense in that, in that type of situation. But if you start doing a lot of um, uh, 
early performance engineering, of course, the approach is different, but we could maybe do an episode helping you to start in that type of environment. Yeah, uh, yeah. as you say, Agile is another beast that I can say now won't take us one episode to, it's going to be quite a bit because it's very different from Waterfall, very different from what we just said. And uh, I think with that, uh, we're going to close this for today. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Hendrik, welcome again. Thank you for being thank here. You. Thank um, you. And uh, I think we could also finish this episode by setting the sentence of the week. Uh, I would say, uh, never walk naked in the street without a test plan in your hand. Oh, yeah. Not naked near the mob or anything like that. So beware. Yeah, the test plan the test plan can cover anything. So it's it's helpful for even if you walk naked in the street. Cover yourself. Ew, cover yourself, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Perfights out. Adios. See you.